Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, and this is a video recording discussing how you can select property packages in Aspen Plus. Now, if you are following along with the handout, the handout was created for version 8, and I'm now working for version 10. So you're going to see a lot of differences in the way that the wizard is going to work with us, but it's going to get similar results. Uh, and be aware that these things will change again in the future. So I've just started a fresh simulation and I entered two components, ethanol and water. What I next would need to do is select my method. And to do that, I need to make a best choice for the method name. One of the things that I can do is I can use the methods assistant. Now the Methods Assistant in version 10 does look very different, actually asks some slightly different questions, but basically it's going to open up a screen that's going to ask you, do you want to either specify a component type or specify a process type? And normally I go with specify the component type. I have a choice of chemical systems, hydrocarbon systems, specialized electrolytes, amines, some of these things have some very special properties, or refrigerants as my options here. So in this case we have an alkanol and a water. Both of these are polar compounds. Ethanol is a hydrocarbon. Water is not, however water is sort of ubiquitous and so is generally considered present in hydrocarbon systems. So choosing the hydrocarbon system would be acceptable to do, but let's go with choosing chemical system, okay? So for chemical systems it will ask me some questions about the high pressure, and I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll assume I'm not going at high pressures. And if it's at low pressures, then it's going to make some suggestions, okay? And none of these really seem to apply very well, so it seems like liquid activity coefficient methods might be a good choice. It will describe these to me, allow me to look at different activity coefficient models, and allow me to explore and ask questions about various of these. Okay, let's go back and say we made a different choice and we chose the hydrocarbon system. Here, my first question is, does the mixture contain petroleum assays or pseudo components? Now, if you don't know what these are, probably it means that it doesn't apply to you. But one of the things that you probably should know is in refining for oil, it's a mixture of a lot of compounds and we never know exactly what's inside there. And so they generally do these by distilling off cuts. So you start at a low temperature and you bring it up to temperature and you begin boiling off compounds. The more volatile will boil off first. And you choose a temperature, let's go with 75 degrees. And everything that boiled at temperatures lower than 75 degrees gets taken off and treated as a single compound or cut or assay. Then you continue heating and boil to maybe 80 degrees. And everything that boils between 75 and 80 is the second cut or assay. Now you characterize these as pseudo components where you're going to take them to a laboratory and make some measurements about maybe critical temperatures and pressures, density information, and so forth. So that's a quick lesson in what a petroleum assay or pseudo component would be. In our case, we don't have these complications. And so for hydrocarbon systems, it recommends that I use one of these standard equations of state, Ping-Robinson, Lee Kessler-Plocker, Suave Redlick Kwong, or the ones that were written for HISIS for Ping-Robinson and Suave Redlick Kwong. I will tell you that HISIS was optimized for use with petroleum systems, and so if you have those, then these are probably good choices. Let's 
go back now and look and say, what if we had specified the process type? Let's explore this option. Here you'll notice that we have chemical, electrolyte, environmental, gas processing, mineral and metallurgy, oil and gas, petrochemical, polymer power, refining, and pharmaceuticals. Probably for this combination, chemical seems like a safe bet. And they make some recommendations. Again, azeotropic separations, carboxylic acid, hydrogen fluoride, inorganic chemicals, liquid phase reactions, phenol plants, refrigeration, and then just assistance with some of these other general rules and methods. Now in our particular case, azeotropic separation is one that sort of stands out because I think what most people know about ethanol and water is that it does indeed form an azeotrope. So if we click on this, it's going to make some suggestions and it says that well if it's at a low pressure then you should probably use an activity coefficient model such as NRTL, Wilson, Uniquac, or Unifac. If it's a refrigerant then I should use the re refrigerant properties packages. So let's go with an activity coefficient method. Again, it's going to come down and make some recommendations and we could choose one of these and I will just go with the Wilson. You can read and make sure if you believe that that's going to be appropriate. Okay, and you make your choice and you come in and you enter it. Okay, Wilson, very last one on the list. All right, so we have that using the methods assistant. I still would need to come in here for parameters and there's the binary interaction parameters and normally I just click on it and accept them. If you've made a good choice, these probably are going to be adequate, whatever they've done, but you also have the opportunity to come in and modify those binary interaction parameters if you choose. Now there are other some quick guidelines. I'm going to bring the handout in and let's look at these for a moment. So one of the ways that you can decide is just by going through a quick little checklist like this. For instance, this is saying that if you have hydrocarbons or hydrocarbons with light gases, so you know maybe you have some methane and ethane in there, if the compounds are similar, have a very narrow range of boiling temperatures, then Peng Robinson is a good choice. If the temperature is more than 250K, Suave Red Lake Kwong, as long as the pressure is not near the critical, the MBWR, and otherwise Lee Kessler is a good choice. For polar organics, and there's only one liquid, then the Wilson equation is nice. If it's possible you'll have two liquids, then NRTL or Uniquac are better choices. If you have a polar organic with light gases, again, those are like methane, ethane, uh, the predictive SRK is probably your better choice. And aqueous solutions or electrolytes, there are special packages, but if you don't have those, then NRTL. And for polymers, the Chen method is probably the best choice. But there are many, many others, and one that I'm particularly fond of is this by Eric Carlson. Now, he wrote an article, Don't Gamble with Physical Properties for Simulations. It was in the Chemical Engineering Progress in 1996. Um, and basically, he starts with a flowchart and a series of questions. So first, you make a decision, is it polar? If it's polar, you come this way. If it's nonpolar, you come this direction. The second question is, do you have electrolytes? And again, you make your choices. Notice this refers you to figure two. This one asks whether or not you have real components or pseudo components. If you have pseudo components, even if there are also real components, then you need to take this path. And they make recommendations or they send you on to another figure. So this is figure two. So this was for the non-electrolytes. The next question is whether or not your pressure is less than 10 bar or greater than 10 bar. And then whether or not you have interactive interaction parameters, if you have that data available to you. 
and makes recommendations based on those. For lower pressures, there's been more studies, and so we have more options available. If you're going to have liquid-liquid system, then you need to make a choice based on that. And finally, we have figure three, which is what's going to happen in the vapor phase. If you have vapor phase association, then you would make a different choice. If you've got polymer polymerization that will happen, you have, yet again, other choices. So you see that there are many rules and many sets of guidelines that will help you in making decisions on which property package. The important thing is that you make a good choice early on. Generally, it's recommended that once you do this, you look at some data and compare it to actual data. So for instance, here is actual data for ethanol and water at one atmosphere. And so you could look at mixtures at one atmosphere with various compositions and see what the Y and the X values are if this is the data you have. You can compare to temperatures or uh, boiling pressures if you have that data. So again, making your property package choice is probably the first, most important, and most critical thing to getting a good simulation. Hopefully these little sets of guidelines have helped you in doing your future modeling. Thank you.